Introduction to Excel Solver When linear programming was first invented, computers were still in their infancy. Problems were solved by longhand calculation or not at all. These days we can use Excel Solver to solve many problems of this nature. This example will show how Solver can take a certain type of problem and give you an answer really quickly. In this example we will use modelling bricks to represent a recycling manufacturing process. This spreadsheet models the whole problem. There are four products, deluxe cars, regular cars, orange wagons and grey wagons. Row 3 has the labels for these products and the blue cells in row 4 are where we can enter the number we wish to make of each product. Each product can be sold for a different profit. This profit is shown in row 6. Each product is made of a different combination of pieces. For example, the regular car takes a large wheel unit, a small wheel unit, a driver and a red motor and produces a profit of $40. This combination of requirements is shown on the spreadsheet in column C under the title regular car. Look at row 14. It shows the number of grey roll bars that each product needs. A deluxe car needs one grey roll bar, a regular car doesn't need any, and the orange wagon and grey wagon each need two grey roll bars. The recycling factory has received a load of materials to recycle into these four products. For example, they have 20 drivers and 30 large wheel units. The spreadsheet shows all the resources that they have at present in the yellow cells in column H. They wish to make as much profit as possible from these materials. We assume that they can sell all the products they make for the profit given in the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is set up so that you can explore different combinations of production and find out what resources are used and what profit is earned for each combination. For example, let's try producing five of each product. The spreadsheet shows that they will use 10 large wheel units, 30 small wheel units, 10 drivers, 5 orange bases, 10 orange fins, 15 grey bases, 25 grey roll bars and 10 red motors and give a profit of $725. This is what it looks like. With this solution we are using all of the small wheel units but there's a lot of other material left. Or we could try to produce as many regular cars as we can. As there are only 20 drivers supplied, we can only make 20 regular cars. This solution gives us a profit of $800, and it seems likely we can do better. If we try to produce 30 regular cars, we would make $1,200, but we will need more drivers than we have, so that possible solution is infeasible. We could use the spreadsheet to continue to explore the different combinations, to try to find out what will give the most profit with the materials we have. This is a possible solution method that can take a long time and we cannot guarantee that we will get the optimal solution. Or we could use Solver. Before we start to use Solver, we need to make sure that our spreadsheet is doing what it's supposed to. In this case, we know that the spreadsheet model works as we've been using it and have checked it. The formulas in this spreadsheet, as in most linear programs, are very straightforward. Column F contains all the formulas and they all use the function sum product. Sum product works by multiplying each cell in the first reference by the corresponding cell in the second reference. So sum product B4 to E4, B6 to E6 is the same as B4 times B6 plus C4 times C6 plus D4 times D6 plus E4 times E6. Sum product is a convenient and safe way to perform these calculations. Having checked the spreadsheet and made sure it works, we are now ready to find the optimal solution, or solve the spreadsheet. First we click on Tools and select Solver. If the word Solver isn't there, you will need to add it in using Add In. Solver looks like this. We need to indicate what we need to maximise or minimise, in this case Profit, which is in cell F6. This is also known as the Objective Function. We tell Solver that we want to maximise by clicking Maximise. Usually we wish to maximise profit or minimise cost. We tell Solver what it can change, the numbers of each product to produce, by highlighting the cells that hold them. 
These are called the decision variables or changing cells and are coloured blue in our spreadsheet model. And we tell solver the constraints, the rules that guide production. In this problem, we want the amount of each component used to be less than or equal to the amount that is available. When we were trying out solutions, we made sure that the values in column F were less than or equal to the values in column H. This is because we can't use more drivers, for instance, than what we have available. Solver needs to be told this explicitly by saying that the values in cells F8 to F15 must be less than or equal to the values in cells H8 to H15. We click on Options and say it is a linear model with non-negativity constraints. And finally, we click Solve and let it do its magic. A results box appears. This results box tells us that Solver has found a solution. This is not always the case. This is a good message to receive. We would like to keep the Solver solution, and for this example we will look only at the answer report. We can see that the numbers in the blue cells have changed and now hold the optimal solution found by Solver. We can also see how much of the different resources have been used. Or we can look at the answer report by clicking on the answer report tab. The answer report tells us that we can make a profit of $1,090 by making 14 deluxe cars, 6 regular cars and 5 orange wagons. The optimal solution is the decision, the number of each product to make, and the value of the optimal solution is the amount that has been maximised, a profit of $1,090. The answer report also tells us about the constraints. The constraints are classified either as binding or not binding. Binding means that we've used up all of the resource. Not binding means that there is some resource left over. The slack column tells us how much is left. Cell F8 holds the number of large wheel units that are used by this solution. In this case it is 20. The constraint was that it needed to be less than or equal to the value in cell H8, which is 30. As 20 is less than 30, the constraint is not binding and there is a slack of 10. There are 10 large wheel units left. The binding constraints for this problem are small wheel unit, driver and orange fins. The solution used all of these that were available and there are none left, so there is zero slack. This is only an introduction to what Solver can do and the information you can get from it. Important things to remember are Make sure the spreadsheet model works before using Solver. Indicate that it is a linear model and needs non-negativity constraints. The answer report tells you how much to produce and what resources have been used.